The Sightless by Maurice Maeterlinck. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The First Blind Man Read by Lambda Second Blind Man Read by Elizabeth Clatt Third Blind Man Read by Christine G. The Oldest Blind Man Read by Todd Fifth Blind Man Read by Larry Wilson The Sixth Blind Man Read by Anastasia Saloha A Young Blind Woman Read by Amanda Friday The Oldest Blind Woman Read by Michelle Eaton A Mad Blind Woman Read by Libby Gaughan Narrator read by Elliot Cage The Sightless a very ancient northern forest, eternal of aspect, beneath a sky profoundly starred. In the midst and towards the depths of night, a very old priest is seated wrapped in a wide black cloak, his head and upper part of his body slightly thrown back and mortally still, are leaning against the bole of an oak tree, huge and cavernous. His face is fearfully pale and of an inalterable waxen lividity. His violet lips are parted. His eyes, dumb and fixed, no longer gaze at the visible side of eternity, and seem bleeding beneath a multitude of immemorial sorrows and of tears. His hair, of a most solemn white, falls in stiff and scanty locks upon a face more illumined and more weary than all else that surrounds it in the intent silence of the gloomy forest. His hands, extremely lean, are rigidly clasped on his lap. To the right, six old blind men are seated upon stones, the stumps of trees and dead leaves. To the left, separated from them by an uprooted tree and fragments of rock. Six women, blind also, are seated facing the old men. Three of them are praying and wailing in hollow voice and without pause. Another is extremely old. The fifth, in an attitude of mute insanity, holds on her knees a little child asleep. The sixth is strangely young, and her hair inundates her whole being. The women, as well as the old men, are clothed in ample garments, somber and uniform. Most of them sit, waiting with their elbows on their knees and their faces between their hands, and all seem to have lost the habit of useless gesture, and no longer turn their heads at the stifled and rustless noises of the island. Great funereal trees, yews, weeping willows, cypresses enwrap them in their faithful shadows. Not far from the priest, a cluster of long and sickly daffodils blossom in the night. It is extraordinarily dark in spite of the moonlight that here and there strives to dispel for a while the gloom of the foliage. Is he not coming yet? You have waked me. I was asleep too. I was asleep too. Is he not coming yet? I hear nothing coming. It must be about time to go back to the asylum. We want to know where we are. It has grown cold since he left. We want to know where we are. Does anyone know where we are? We were walking a very long time. We must be very far from the asylum. Ha! Huh. The women are opposite us. We are sitting opposite you. Wait, I will come next to you. He rises and gropes about. Where are you? Speak, that I may hear where you are. Here, we are sitting on stones. He steps forward, stumbling against the fallen tree and the rocks. There is something between us. It is better to stay where one is. Where are you sitting? Do you want to come over to us? We dare not stand up. Why did he separate us? I hear praying on the women's side. Yes, the three old women are praying. This is not the time to pray. You can pray by and by in the dormitory. The three old women continue their prayers. I should like to know next to whom I am sitting. I think I am next to you. They grope about them with their hands. We cannot touch each other. And yet we are not far apart. He gropes about him, and with his stick hits the fifth blind man who gives a dull moan. The one who cannot hear is sitting next to us. I don't hear everybody. We were six just now. 
I am beginning to make things out. Let us question the women too. It is necessary that we should know how matters stand. I still hear the three old women praying. Are they sitting together? They are sitting beside me on a rock. I am sitting on dead leaves. And the beauty, where is she? She is near those that are praying. Where are the mad woman and her child? He is asleep. Don't wake him. Oh, how far from us you are. I thought you were just opposite me. We know, more or less, all that we need know. Let us talk a little, till the priest comes back. He told us to await him in silence. We are not in a church. You don't know where we are. I feel frightened when I am not talking. Do you know where the priest has gone? It seems to me that he is leaving us alone too long. He is growing too old. It appears that he has hardly been able to see for some time himself. He will not own it for fear that another should come and take his place among us. But I suspect that he can hardly see any more. We ought to have another guide. He never listens to us now, and we are becoming too many for him. The three nuns and he are the only ones in the house that can see, and they are all older than we are. I am sure that he has led us astray and is trying to find the way again. Where can he have gone? He has no right to leave us here. He has gone very far. I think he said so to the woman. Then he only speaks to the women now? Do we not exist any more? We shall have to complain in the end. To whom will you carry your complaint? I don't yet know. We shall see. We shall see. But where can he have gone? I am asking it of the women. He was tired, having walked so long. I think he sat down a moment in our midst. He has been very sad and very weak for some days. He has been uneasy since the doctor died. He is lonely. He hardly ever speaks. I don't know what can have happened. He insisted on going out today. He said he wanted to see the island one last time, in the sun, before winter came. It appears that the winter will be very cold and very long, and that ice is already coming down from the north. He was anxious too, they say, that the great storms of these last days have swelled the stream and that all the dikes are giving way. He said too that the sea frightened him. It appears to be agitated for no reason, and the cliffs of the island are not high enough. He wanted to see for himself, but he did not tell us what he saw. I think he has gone now to fetch some bread and water for the mad woman. He said that he would perhaps have to go very far. We shall have to wait. He took my hands on leaving, and his hands trembled as if he were afraid. Then he kissed me. Ho, oh, oh. ho. I asked him what had happened. He told me that he did not know what was going to happen. He told me that the old men's reign was coming to an end, perhaps. What did he mean by that? I did not understand him. He told me that he was going towards the great lighthouse. Is there a lighthouse here? Yes, north of the island. I think we are not far from it. He told me that he could see the light of the beacon falling here, upon the leaves. He never seemed to me sadder than today, and I think that for some days he had been crying. I don't know why, but I cried too, without seeing him. I did not hear him go. I did not question him further. I could hear that he was smiling too solemnly. I could hear that he was closing his eyes and wished for silence. He said nothing to us of all this. You never listen to him when he speaks. You all murmur when he speaks. He merely said good night on leaving. It must be very late. He said good night two or three times on leaving, as if he were going to sleep. I could hear that he was looking at me when he said, Good night, good night. The voice changes when one looks at someone fixedly. Have pity on those that cannot see. Who is talking in that senseless way? I think it is the one who cannot hear. Be quiet. This is not the time to beg. Where was he going for the bread and water? He went towards the sea. 
one does not walk towards the sea in that way at his age. Are we near the sea? Yes. Be quiet an instant. You will hear it. A murmur of the sea near at hand, and very calm against the cliffs. I only hear the three old women praying. Listen well. You will hear it through their prayers. Yes. I hear something that is not far from us. It was asleep. It seems as if it were waking. It was wrong of him to lead us here. I don't like hearing that noise. You know very well that the island is not large, and that one can hear it as soon as ever one leaves the walls of the asylum. I never listened to it. It seems to me that it is next us today. I don't like hearing it so close. Nor I. Besides, we never asked to leave the asylum. We have never been as far as this. It was useless to bring us so far. It was very fine this morning. He wanted us to enjoy the last days of sunshine before shutting us up for the whole winter in the asylum. But I prefer staying in the asylum. He too said that we ought to know something of the little island we live in. He himself has never been all over it. There is a mountain that no one has climbed, valleys which no one likes to go down to, and caves that have not been entered to this day. He said, in short, that one must not always sit waiting for the sun under the dormitory roof. He wanted to bring us to the seashore. He has gone there alone. He is right. One must think of living. But there is nothing to see out of doors. Are we in the sun now? Is the sun still shining? I think not. It seems to me to be very late. What o'clock is it? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Nobody, Nobody knows. knows. Is it still light? To the sixth blind man. Where are you? Come, you who can see a little, come. I think it's very dark. When the sun shines, I see a blue line under my eyelids. I saw one a long while ago, but now I can see nothing at all. As for me, I know that it is late when I am hungry, and I am hungry. But look up at the sky. You will see something, perhaps. They all lift their heads towards the sky, save the three that were born blind, who continue to look on the ground. I don't know that we are under the sky. Our voices resound as if they were in a cave. I rather think they resound so because it is evening. It seems to me that I feel the moonlight on my hands. I think there are stars. I hear them. I too. I can hear no sound. I can only hear the sound of our breathing. I think the women are right. I never heard the stars. Neither, Neither did, I. did I. A flight of night birds alights suddenly amidst the foliage. Listen. Listen, what is that above us? Do you hear? Something passed between the sky and us. There is something moving above our heads. But we cannot reach it. I don't know the nature of that sound. I want to go back to the asylum. We want to know where we are. I have tried to stand up. There are thorns, nothing but thorns about me. I dare not spread my hands out any more. We want to know where we are. We cannot know it. We must be very far from the house. I can no longer make out a single noise. For a long while I have smelt the smell of dead leaves. Did anyone of us see the island in past days, and could he tell us where we are? We were all blind when we came here. We have never been able to see. Let us not be unnecessarily anxious. He will soon return. Let us wait a little longer. But in future we will not go out with him again. We cannot go out alone. We will not go out at all. I prefer not going out. We had no wish to go out. Nobody had asked to do so. It was a holiday on the island. We always go out on great holidays. He came and hit me on the shoulder when I was still asleep, saying, Get up, get up. It is time. The sun is shining. Was there any sun? I was not aware of it. I have never seen the sun. 
I saw the sun when I was very young. I, too, it was long ago, when I was a child, but I hardly remember it now. Why does he want us to go out every time the sun shines? Which of us is any the wiser? I never know whether I am walking out at midday or at midnight. I prefer going at midday. I suspect a great brightness then, and my eyes make great efforts to open. I prefer staying in the refectory by the coal fire. There was a big fire there this morning. He could bring us out into the sun in the yard. There one has the shelter of the walls. One cannot get out. There is nothing to fear when the door is shut. I always shut it. Why did you touch my left elbow? I did not touch you. I cannot reach you. I tell you that somebody touched my elbow. It was none of us. I want to go away. Oh God, oh God, tell us where we are. We cannot wait here forever. A very distant clock strikes twelve very slowly. Oh, how far we are from the asylum. It is midnight. It is midday. Does anyone know? Speak. Mm, I don't know. But I think we are in the shade. I can make nothing out. We slept too long. I am hungry. We, we are hungry, hungry and thirsty. Have we been here long? It seems to me that I have been here centuries. I am beginning to make out where we are. We ought to go towards where midnight struck. All the night birds exult suddenly in the gloom. Do you hear? Do you hear? We are not alone. I have had my suspicions for a long time. We are being overheard. Has he come back? I don't know what it is. It is above us. Did the others hear nothing? You were always silent. We are still listening. I hear wings about me. Oh God, oh God, tell us where we are. I am beginning to make out where we are. The asylum is on the other side of the big river. We have crossed the old bridge. He has brought us to the north side of the island. We are not far from the river, and perhaps we should hear it if he were to listen a moment. We shall have to go down to the edge of the water if he does not come back. Night and day great ships pass there, and the sailors will see us standing on the banks. It may be that we are in the forest that surrounds the lighthouse, but I don't know the way out of it. Is somebody willing to follow me? Let us keep seated. Let us wait. Let us wait. We don't know the direction of the big river, and there are bogs all around the asylum. Let us wait. Let us wait. He will come back. He is bound to come back. Does anyone know which way we came here? He explained it to us as we walked. I paid no attention. Did anyone listen to him? We must listen to him in the future. Was anyone of us born on the island? You know quite well that we come from elsewhere. We come from the other side of the sea. I thought I should have died crossing. I too. We came together. We are all three of the same parish. They say that one can see it from here in the clear weather, towards the north. It was no steeple. We landed by chance. I come from another direction. From where do you come? I no longer dare think of it. I can hardly call it to mind when I speak of it. It was too long ago. It was colder there than here. And I, I come from very far. Where do you come from, then? I could not tell you. How should I be able to describe it? It is too far from here. It is beyond the seas. I come from a big country. I could only explain it to you by signs, and we cannot see. I have wandered too long. But I have seen the sun and water and fire and mountains and faces and strange flowers. There are none like them on this island. It is too dismal here and too cold. I have never known the scent again since I lost my sight. But I saw my parents and my sisters. I was too young then to know where I was. I still played about on the seashore. 
yet how well I remember having seen. One day I looked at the snow from the top of a mountain. I was just beginning to distinguish those that are to be unhappy. What do you mean? I can still distinguish them by the sound of their voice at times. I have memories that are clearer when I am not thinking of them. I have no memories. I... A flight of big birds of passage passes clamoring above the foliage. There is something passing again beneath the sky. Why did you come here? To whom are you speaking? To our young sister. They told me that he could cure me. He says that I shall see again some day. Then I shall be able to leave the island. We should all like to leave the island. We shall stay here forever. He is too old. He will never have time to cure us. My eyelids are closed, but I feel that my eyes are alive. Mine are open. I sleep with my eyes open. Let us not speak of our eyes. You have not been here long. One evening, during prayers, I heard on the woman's side a voice I did not know. And I could tell by your voice that you were young. I wanted to see you, having heard your voice. I never noticed it. He never lets us know anything. They say that you are beautiful, like some woman come from afar. I have never seen myself. We have never seen each other. We question each other, and we answer each other. We live together, and we are always together. But we know not what we are. It is all very well to touch each other with both hands. Eyes know more than hands. I see your shadows sometimes when you are in the sun. We have never seen the house in which we live. It is all very well to touch the walls and the windows. We know nothing of where we live. They say it is an old castle, very gloomy and very wretched. One never sees a light there, save in the tower where the priest's room is. Those who cannot see need no light. When I'm keeping the flocks around about the asylum, the sheep go home of themselves. When at the evening they see the light in the tower, they have never led me astray. For years and years we have lived together, and we have never beheld each other. One would say we were always alone. One must see to love. I sometimes dream that I can see. I only see when I am dreaming. I only dream, as a rule, at midnight. Of what can one dream when one's hands are motionless? A squall shakes the forest, and the leaves fall in dismal showers. Who was it touched my hands? There is something falling around us. It comes from above. I don't know what it is. Who was it touched my hands? I was asleep. Let me sleep. Nobody touched your hands. Who was it took my hands? Answer loud. I am rather hard of hearing. We don't ourselves know. Have they come to warn us? It is of no use answering. He can hear nothing. It must be admitted that the deaf are very unfortunate. I am tired of sitting down. I am tired of being here. We seem to me so far from one another. Let us try to draw a little closer together. Oh, it's beginning to be cold. I dare not stand up. It is better to stay where one is. There is no knowing what there may be between us. I think both of my hands are bleeding. I want to stand up. I can hear that you are leaning towards me. The blind woman rubs her eyes violently, moaning and persistently turning towards the motionless priest. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I hear another noise. I think it is our poor sister rubbing her eyes. She never does anything else. I hear her every night. She's mad. She never says anything. She has never spoken since she had her child. She seems always to be afraid. Are you not afraid here, then? Who? All the rest of us. Yes, yes, we are afraid. We have been afraid a long time. Why do you ask that? I don't know why I ask it. There is something I cannot make out. It seems as if I heard a sudden sound of crying in our midst. It does not do to be afraid. I think it is the mad woman. 
there is something else besides. I am sure there is something else besides. It is not only that which frightens me. She always cries when she is about to suckle her child. She is the only one that cries so. They say that she can still see at times. One never hears the others cry. One must see to weep. I smell a scent of flowers round about us. I only smell the smell of the earth. There are flowers. There are flowers near us. I only smell the smell of the earth. I have just smelt flowers on the wind. I only smell the smell of the earth. I think the women are right. Where are they? I will go and beat them. To your right. Stand up. The sixth blind man rises slowly, and knocking himself against the trees and bushes, gropes his way towards the daffodils, which he treads down and crushes as he goes. I can hear that you are snapping green stems. Stop! Stop! Never mind about the flowers, but think about getting back. I dare not retrace my steps. You must not come back. Wait. She rises. Oh, how cold the earth is. It is going to freeze. She moves without hesitation towards the strange pale daffodils, but she is stopped by the fallen tree and the rocks in the neighborhood of the flowers. They are here. I cannot reach them. They are on your side. I think I am picking them. Groping about him, he picks what flowers are left and offers them to her. The night birds fly away. It seems to me that I once saw these flowers. I have forgotten their name. But how ill they are, and how limp their stalks are. I hardly know them again. I think they are the flowers of the dead. She plates the daffodils in her hand. I hear the sound of your hair. Those are the flowers. We shall not see you. I shall not see myself. I am cold. At this moment the wind rises in the forest, and the sea roars suddenly and with violence against the neighboring cliffs. It is thundering. I think it is a storm rising. I think it is the sea. The sea? Is it the sea? But it is at two steps from us. It is beside us. I hear it all round me. It must be something else. I hear the sound of waves at my feet. I think it is the wind and the dead leaves. I think the women are right. It will be coming here. Where does the wind come from? It comes from the sea. It always comes from the sea. The sea hems us in on all sides. It cannot come from elsewhere. Let us not think of the sea any more. But we must think of it, as it is going to reach us. You don't know that it is the sea? I hear its waves as if I were going to dip both hands in. Oh, we cannot stay here. They may be all around us. Where do you want to go? No matter where. No matter where. I will not hear the sound of that water any more. Let us go. Let us go. It seems to me that I hear something else besides. Listen. A sound of footsteps, swift and distant, is heard among the dead leaves. There is something coming towards us. He is coming. He is coming. He is coming back. He is taking little steps, like a little child. Let us reproach him nothing today. I think it is not the step of a man. A big dog enters the forest and passes before them. Silence. Who is that? Who are you? Have pity on us. We have been waiting so long. The dog stops and returning lays his front paws on the blind man's knees. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. What have you put on my knees? What is it? Is it an animal? I think it is a dog. Ho, ho! It is the dog. It is the dog from the asylum. Come here! Come here! He has come to deliver us. Come here! Come here! Come here! Come here! Come here. Come here. Come here. He has come to deliver us. He has followed our traces. He is licking my hands as if he has found me after hundreds of years. He is howling for joy. He will die of joy. Listen. Listen. 
Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. He has perhaps run on in front of somebody. No, no, he is alone. I hear nothing coming. We need no other guide. There is none better. He will lead us wherever we want to go. He will obey us. I dare not follow him. Nor I. Why not? He sees better than we do. Let us not listen to the women. I think that something has changed in the sky. I breathe freely. The air is pure now. It is the sea breeze that is blowing round us. It seems to me that it is going to get white. I think the sun is rising. I think it is going to be cold. We shall find the way. He is dragging me along. He is drunk with joy. I can no longer hold him back. Follow me. Follow me. We are going home. He rises, dragged along by the dog, who leads him towards the motionless priest, and there stops. Where, Where are, are you going? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you, Where are you? Where are you? Where are you going? Where are you? Take, Take care. care. Take care. Wait, wait. Don't follow me yet. I will come back. He is standing still. What is it? Ha! Ha! I have touched something very cold. What are you saying? I can hardly hear your voice any more. I think I am touching a face. What are you saying? One can hardly understand you any more. What is the matter with you? Where are you? Are you already so far away from us? Ho! 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 I don't yet know what it is. There is a dead man in our midst. A dead, a dead man, man in our midst? Where, 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 Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There is a dead man among us. I tell you. Ho! Ho! I have touched a dead face. You are sitting next to a dead body. One of us must have died suddenly. But speak then, that I may know which are alive. Where are you? Answer. Answer altogether. They answer in succession, save the mad woman and the deaf man. The three old women have ceased praying. I can no longer distinguish your voices. You are all speaking alike. They are all trembling. There are two who did not answer. Where are they? He touches with his stick the fifth blind man. It is not he. Is it the mad woman? She is sitting next to me. I can hear her live. I think... I think it is the priest. He is standing. Come. 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 He is standing. Then he is not dead. Where is he? Come and see. They all rise, save the mad woman and the fifth blind man, and grope their way towards the dead. Is he here? Is it he? Yes, yes, I recognize him. Oh God, oh God, what is to become of us? Father, Father, is it you? Father, what has happened? What is the matter with you? Answer us, we are all gathered round you. Oh, oh, oh. Bring some water. He is perhaps still alive. Let us try. He will perhaps be able to lead us back to the asylum. It is useless. I cannot hear his heart. He is cold. He died without a word. You ought to have warned us. Oh, how old he was. It is the first time I ever touched his face. He is taller than we are. Feeling the corpse. His eyes are wide open. He died with clasped hands. He died, so, for no reason. He is not standing. He is sitting on a stone. Oh God, oh God, I did not know all. All. He had been ill so long. He must have suffered today. Oh, 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 he never complained. He only complained in pressing our hands. One does not always understand. One never understands. Let us pray around him. Kneel down. The women kneel moaning. I dare not kneel down. One does not know what one is kneeling on here. Was he ill? He never told us. 
I heard him whisper something as he went. I think he was speaking to our young sister. What did he say? She will not answer. You will not answer us any more. But where are you then? Speak. You made him suffer too much. You have killed him. You would go no further. You wanted to sit down on the stones by the roadside to eat. You grumbled all day. I heard him sigh. He lost courage. Was he ill? Did you know it? We knew nothing. We had never seen him. When have we ever known of anything that passed before our poor dead eyes? He never complained. Now it is too late. I have seen three die, but never so. Now it is our turn. It is not I that made him suffer. I never said anything. Nor I. We followed him without a word. He died going to fetch water for the mad woman. What are we to do now? Where shall we go? Where is the dog? Here. He will not leave the dead. Drag him away. Drive him off. Drive him off. He will not leave the dead. We cannot wait beside a dead man. We cannot die thus in the dark. Let us keep together. Let us not move away from one another. Let us hold hands. Let us all sit down on this stone. Where are the others? Come here. Come. Come. Where are you? Here. I am here. Are we all together? Come nearer to me. Where are your hands? It is very cold. Oh, how cold your hands are. What are you doing? I was putting my hands to my eyes. I thought I was going to see all at once. Who is that crying? Oh. It is the mad woman sobbing. Uh, Yet she does not uh, know the truth. Uh, I think we shall die here. Someone will come, perhaps. Who else would be likely to come? I don't know. I think the nuns will come out of the asylum. They never go out of an evening. They never go out at all. I think that the men from the big lighthouse will see us. They never come down from their tower. They might see us. They are always looking towards the sea. It is cold. Listen to the dead leaves. I think it is freezing. Oh, how hard the earth is. I hear to my left a noise that I cannot make out. It is the sea moaning against the rocks. I thought it was the woman. I hear the ice breaking under the waves. Who is it that is shivering so? He is making us all shake on the stone. I can no longer open my hands. Uh, I hear another noise that I cannot make out. Which of us is it that is shivering uh, uh, so? He is shaking the stone. I think it is a woman. I uh, think the mad woman is shivering most. I cannot hear her uh, child. I think he is still sucking. He is the only uh, one that can see where we are. I hear the north wind. I think there are no more stars. It is going to snow. Then we are lost. If one of us falls asleep, he must be waked. I am sleepy, though. A squall makes the dead leaves whirl. Do you hear the dead leaves? I think someone is coming towards us. It is the wind. Listen. No one will come now. The great cold is coming. I hear someone walking in the distance. I only hear the dead leaves. I hear someone walking very far from us. I only hear the north wind. I tell you that someone is coming towards us. I hear a sound of very slow footsteps. I think the women are right. It begins to snow in great flakes. Ho! Oh, oh, Ho! What is that falling? So cold on my hands. It is snowing. Let us draw up close to one another. But listen to the sound of the footsteps. For God's sake, be still an instant. They are drawing nearer. They are drawing nearer. Listen, then. Here the mad woman's child begins to wail suddenly in the dark. The child is crying. It sees. It sees. It must see something as it is crying. She seizes the child in her arms and moves forward in the direction whence the sound of footsteps seem to come. The other women follow her anxiously and surround her. I am going to meet it. Take care. 
Oh, how he is crying! What is it? Don't cry. Don't be afraid. There is nothing to be afraid of. We are here all about you. What do you see? Fear nothing. Don't cry so. What is it that you see? Tell us, what is it that you see? The sound of footsteps is drawing nearer. Listen, listen. I hear the rustling of a dress among the dead leaves. Is it a woman? Is it the sound of footsteps? It is perhaps the sea on the dead leaves. No, no, they are footsteps. They are footsteps. They are footsteps. We shall soon know. Listen to the dead leaves. I hear them. I hear them almost beside us. Listen. Listen. What is it that you see? What is it that you see? Which way is he looking? He always follows the sound of the footsteps. Look, look, when I turn him away, he turns back to look. He sees, he sees, he sees. He must see something strange. Lift him above us that he may see. Coming forward. Step aside, step aside. She lifts the child above the group of the sightless. The footsteps have stopped right among us. They are here. They are here in our midst. Who are you? Silence. Have pity on us. Silence. The child cries more desperately. The End End of The Sightless by Maurice Maeterlinck